This evening, Vice President Jack Dio calls for action on unlawful vending along the seawall, sparking a debate on urban order and livelihood. Next, a bomb threat at St. Rose's High School sends authorities into high alert. We'll bring you the latest on the investigation and the school's response to ensure safety. Moving on, robbery strikes after the Warner Boys show in Georgetown. We have details on the brazen theft and the ongoing police efforts to bring the culprits to justice. Then, Ghana strengthens global ties with key diplomatic appointments. Find out who's taking on crucial roles to represent the nation's interests abroad. Plus, in Haiti, gangs launch attack amidst political changes. We'll explore the implications of the call for action to restore order. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Hella News Update for May 3rd, 2024. I am Vivi Beckett. Thank you for joining us. First up, Vice President Dr. Barry Chagdew has urged the Ministry of Public Works to expedite its responses to unlawful vending and employ appropriate measures for a peaceful resolution. Dr. Jaglio noted the ministry's delayed actions in addressing unlawful vending and unauthorized structures, particularly along the seawall. Speaking at the weekly press conference briefing at Freedom House on Thursday, he emphasized the government's recognition of individuals' right to earn a living and its facilitation of vending within established guidelines. These guidelines include restrictions on permanent structures, vending space size limitations, distance regulations for mobile vending cars, and the obligation for vendors to maintain cleanliness in their area of operation. Dr. Jaglio pointed out specific instances where individuals have violated these guidelines, such as the construction of fixed structures for vending purposes. In response, the Ministry of Public Works has launched a comprehensive campaign to regulate vending along the seawalls, including strict enforcement of regulations and permit requirements. Nevertheless, this move has garnered criticism from some individuals who argue that they were not informed about the regulations during the construction of their structures, a point Dr. Jagdu acknowledged. He criticized the ministry's delayed response, leading to confrontations with vendors. The Vice President reiterated President Dr. Mohamed Irfan's directive to police highways and public spaces actively to prevent unauthorized erection of structures. He emphasized the Ministry's recent actions undertaken by the Sea Defense Board to dismantle permanent structures surrounding vending caravans, including sheds and unauthorized extensions. The call from Dr. Jaglio underscores ongoing efforts to address unlawful vending practices while ensuring compliance with established regulations and promoting orderly urban spaces. In other news, a tense situation unfolded at St. Rose's High School on Church Street as authorities responded to an alleged bomb threat received during school hours on May 2nd. Reports indicate that around 13.45 hours, a typist clerk at the school received a concerning call from an unidentified male. The caller claimed that an individual was en route to the auditorium with an explosive device before abruptly ending the call. In response to the threat, the typist clerk promptly notified the school's headmistress, who in turn alerted officials from the Ministry of Education. Subsequently, a specialized team from the Explosive Ordinance Detection Unit was mobilized to the scene. Upon their arrival, a thorough search of the school's premises and surrounding areas was conducted. Fortunately, no explosive device was discovered. Throughout the investigation, members of the Ghana Fire Service provided support and assistance to ensure the school's safety and security. Authorities continue to investigate the incident, working diligently to identify the source of the threat and ascertain any potential risk posed to the school's community. Moving on, four individuals returning home from the Burner Boy show in Georgetown were allegedly robbed of hundreds of thousands of dollars in valuables by three males at Durban Backlands in the early hours of Thursday, May 2nd. The victims, including a 41-year-old manager, a 31-year-old office clerk, a 25-year-old unemployed female, and a 34-year-old quality assurance officer, were reportedly targeted by three identifiable males on bicycles. Investigations revealed that the victims had just come from the Borna Boy show, exited their vehicle and were about to enter the yard when the three suspects approached them on their bicycles from a western direction. One of the suspects approached one of the females and told her to give him the white 
side bag she had around her shoulder, to which she complied. The suspects then went on to relieve the other victims of their cash, cell phones, jewelry, and other valuables. After committing the act, the suspects mounted their bicycles and made good their escape in a western direction. No arrest has been made and investigations are ongoing. This incident serves as a stark reminder of the importance of safety precautions and vigilance, particularly in the aftermath of large events. Stick around when returning. Ghana appoints new diplomatic envoy and man arrested with AR-15 rifle and cannabis in the Santa Marara. This Mother's Day, celebrate in style and give mom the chance to win big. Simply top up with $1,000 or more for a chance to be one of five lucky winners of a brand new fully stocked French door fridge with groceries worth over $550,000 each. One winner will be selected weekly from April 5th to May 9th. Start topping up today. Digicel, the network for everyone, everywhere. Good, good girl, forget things. Problem, Granny. I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. All we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fritters, and spice cake. For the noodles, all of these will be using peppies, black pepper, kasri, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, fried spice, and our purpose seasoning. Next, this chicken that we marinate soak for so you know nothing with peppies, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and document plastic flour, and then this butter we make with this quick piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boil in oil. We serve with peppies, barbecue sauce. Radical went to the supermarket, and she probably buy up enough, enough things. She feels she alone can cook, but she wrote in the even wrong. It's shaped like a guy in a mop. Peppies <laughs> has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies, we put the pep back into your kitchen. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs and carpets, bedroom, dining and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs and filing cabinets, outdoor benches and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Riverton and Camp Street, Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Sneak name with the gift of sight from modern optical services. Let our professional team examine and prescribe what's best for your eyes. Common smiles make fashionable faces. See us for a full line of optical services, including brand name and prescription eyewear. Modern Optical Services, 316 Mill Street, Georgetown, telephone 226-1082. Welcome back. 
The government of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana has announced key diplomatic appointments to strengthen bilateral ties and represent the nation's global interests. Professor Compton Bourne has been designated as the ambassador to the Federative Republic of Brazil, marking a significant step in enhancing relations with a crucial regional partner. With his extensive experience and expertise, Professor Bourne is expected to foster closer cooperation between the two countries. Dr. Leslie Ransami will serve as the ambassador to Switzerland and concurrently as Ghana's permanent representative to the United Nations in Geneva. His dual role underscores Ghana's commitment to active engagement in multilateral forums, where he will advocate for the nation's interests on issues of global significance. Sis Narayan Singh's appointment as ambassador to the Kingdom of Belgium comes with additional responsibilities as Ghana's permanent representative to the European Union and the Organization of African, Caribbean, and Pacific States. Based in Brussels, Ambassador Singh will play a pivotal role in advancing Ghana's interests within these influential international organizations. These distinguished diplomats are poised to assume their duties imminently, reflecting Ghana's proactive approach to diplomatic engagement and its commitment to advancing its standing in the global community. On a different note, a 41-year-old man from Roraima Housing Scheme, West Bank, Demerara, found himself in police custody after authorities discovered an AR-15 rifle, ammunition, and suspected cannabis at his residence. Acting on intelligence, police officers conducted a search at the man's premises on Thursday, May 2nd. During the search, law enforcement officers uncovered the rifle along with four live rounds of ammunition, four blue pills, and three transparent bags containing suspected cannabis in the living room. Further inspection of the yard revealed three cannabis plants and four Ziploc bags containing cannabis seeds. Upon discovery, the 41-year-old man was informed of an offense, cautioned, and subsequently arrested. The confiscated items, including the cannabis totaling 11.2 grams, were lodged at the Lagrange police station. The suspect remains in custody as investigations continue into the matter. Don't go away after the break. Floods in Kenya, 52 bodies retrieved, many more missing. And Bangladesh economy, cost of living crisis stemming from war. Not a single bar of service. Not with us. Digicel officially has the best mobile coverage in Guyana. Ookla, the company behind Speed Test, recognizes Digicel as the network with the best mobile coverage in Guyana. Be it in Aishalton or in Etteringbang, we got you covered. Digicel, the award-winning network for everyone, everywhere. Welcome to Fortune Investment Company, your number one eco-friendly cleaning and janitorial company in Guyana. At Fortune Investment Company, we specialize in commercial and residential cleaning. Whether it's your home or office, our experienced team is detailed focused and take pride in providing excellent services to make your spaces sparkle. Restaurants and kitchen cleaning? Aren't you tired of hearing your chef complain? Keep your culinary spaces spotless and hygienic with our dedicated maintenance services. Floor scrubbing and polishing? Elevate the look of your home or business. Give your floors a new lease on life with our professional scrubbing and polishing. But that's not all. We also offer power washing and steam cleaning. Say goodbye to dirt and moss. Our power washing services will leave your surfaces looking brand new. Revitalize your carpets, matrasses, and chairs with our thorough steam cleaning services. When you want someone to clean your space with care and without the unhealthy chemicals, you want Fortune Investment Company. Call us now at 646-0405 or 689-7558 or 639-6365 or visit us at 3430 Jacksonville Housing Scheme, North Rumfeld to schedule your cleaning and janitorial services. Visit our business pages at Fortune Investment Company to learn more about our services and promotion. Fortune Investment Company, where cleanliness meets perfection, because a clean space is a happy space. And remember, we do the dirty works while you stay clean. Good, good girl, forget things. Oh, yeah. What's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing on a fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, 
you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Modern Optical Services, three sixteen Mill Street, Georgetown. Telephone two two six one zero eight two. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisoon's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs, and carpets, bedroom, dining, and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs, and filing cabinets, outdoor benches, and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Cliverton, and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Welcome back. Now we take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. At least 12 casualties are confirmed in Cap Haitian due to heavy rainfalls causing floods and landslides. The Municipal Commission expresses condolences and deep sadness over the tragic loss. One instant recorded 11 fatalities in Labori due to landslides with another casualty in Rival. Rescue operations persist as teams and residents search for survivors amid the rubble. Authorities urge vigilance, advising adherence to safety protocols and avoiding unnecessary travels in high-risk areas. The Municipal Commission pledges full support to affected individuals, coordinating relief efforts with emergency services and local organizations to address the aftermath of the disaster. Meanwhile, gangs in Haiti have launched a series of attacks in the capital just days after the new prime minister took office. Haitians are calling on the new government to boost the police force and restore law and order, Al Jazeera's Fenton Monaghan reports. Law and order has broken down in Port-au-Prince. Families are fleeing to safer parts of the city as gang violence intensifies. They were shooting very intensely with heavy weapons. It is a terrible situation that we have been experiencing since last night. They have been setting fire to things non-stop. Criminal gangs control large parts of the city. They've burned businesses, attacked police stations and broken thousands of inmates out of prisons. Haiti's transitional government announced a new prime minister on Tuesday. Many hoped that would restore security to Haiti, but so far the violence has only intensified. This school has been turned into a shelter for dozens of families taking refuge from the violence. People here say there's no hope for the country until it becomes safe to walk the streets. The circumstances we are now experiencing in our country are unthinkable. We see no way out. What is worrying is insecurity, because in a country where there is no security, nothing can move forward. More than 1,500 people have been killed by gang violence so far this year. And the UN says 5 million people are struggling to get enough to eat. Until order is restored, ordinary Haitians will continue to suffer. Vincent Monaghan, Al Jazeera. Internationally, a cyclone could complicate efforts to recover the bodies of those killed in Kenya's flooding. 52 bodies have been found, but dozens are still missing in the floods that locals say were caused by a blocked drain and torrential rains. Al Jazeera's Catherine Soy Government workers and volunteers in Maimahiu have a large area to cover. They're clearing debris as they look for more bodies, possibly trapped under the mud. Flood waters gashed downstream, carrying huge trees and boulders. Dozens of people and houses on the torrent's path were swept away. Jane Wamboy's harvest cannot be salvaged. This was her family home. 
There was a body found over there. There are many people who cannot be found. Many of my neighbors cannot be found. Residents say the incident was caused by a blocked drain, which then caused water to accumulate in a galley upstream. That was the level of the water, so you can imagine how much it was. And the people who lived here say they are just lucky to be alive. Nahashan Igeria is here to look for his nephew who's missing. He says this was a man-made disaster. This was caused by the State National Railways Corporation. They are the ones who build the culvert downstream and the tunnel upstream. It should be their responsibility to maintain the system. Those who lost everything are at a camp for the displaced. They are getting hot meals, clothes and medical care. It is yet to be established whether there was even blockage in the first place. Because a team is currently on the ground to establish what actually transpired. So it will be premature to say there was a blockage, there was negligence, there is blame on the government. Those who are waiting for news of their missing relatives say they are desperate to find the bodies. Only then can they find solace. Catherine Soy, Al Jazeera, Maimahio, Central Kenya. Finally, many people in Bangladesh have been under pressure by a worsening cost of living crisis. Inflation is running at more than 9.5% and is likely to increase. Al Jazeera's Tanvir Chowdhury has more. In Bangladesh, what had been a fast-growing economy in recent years is now being overshadowed by soaring energy and food prices. With the cost of imports rising and foreign currency reserve dwindling, the government has been forced to borrow from global agencies and impose austerity measures. Many are now struggling to bear the additional cost. Price actually prices do fluctuate in the market, but they mostly go up making it very hard for the fixed income and middle class people. They have no choice but to manage by cutting down on purchases or buying poor quality items. A recent survey by the country's statistics bureau found about a quarter of families are taking out loans to meet their basic needs. Incomes are stagnant and farmers say prices are been kept at unfair levels by middlemen in the supply chain. <laughs> The way things are now, we can't recover half our cost from planting paddy. The prices have gone up for fertilizers and diesel, renting tractors and employing workers, but we just can't abandon farming. According to another survey by South Asian economists, around 70% of households in Bangladesh have been forced to change what they eat due to high prices. A recent report from a Bangladeshi NGO says that some people here are paying more than consumers in Europe and the USA for basic essentials like eggs, cooking oil and milk. Some economists also say business syndicates are manipulating markets to keep prices high and they have also criticized the policies of the central bank. So the three factors that have driven up inflation are the energy price adjustments, major devaluation in Taka, which increased the food import prices, and we also saw the lack of response from Bangladesh Bank in imposing a contractionary monetary policy. The government says it will expand its social protection program. We will import or buy from local sources any essential commodities that might be needed under the current prevailing situation to keep the market and the distribution process stable and even keep buffer stocks. Although food prices have fallen in some countries, the cost of essential food items is continuing to go up in Bangladesh, despite the government's effort to stabilize it. Tanvi Chaudhary, Al Jazeera, Dhaka. This brings us to the end of the regional and global news coverage. Up next is the free weather forecast.
and at Safe TV to Headline News for this Friday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. We will be off for the weekend, but you can tune in on Tuesday at 7 p.m. for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other and do have a wonderful weekend.